Team Keep It Clean, what's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And in this video, we're here to share our post game thoughts. And what's sad about this is this is the final post game thoughts video of the season. Uh, by the way that this season has started, by the way that it had been going, um, by the way that this Baltimore Ravens team was assembled and how they really showed themselves throughout the regular season and then even last week in the playoffs, I truly believe, and I said it from the very beginning, before the season even started, I truly believe that this Baltimore Ravens team was Super Bowl bound. And I felt like the only thing that could have gotten their way was health. I said, maybe, maybe, maybe coaching too, but health, really. <laughs> but they were healthy. Uh, but this game against the Chiefs, oh, it was just a million different things that got in their way. Uh, obviously the Chiefs, uh, but then a lot from the Ravens as well. Uh, before we get into it, um, and I know it's a sad occasion, it sucks, it's, it's very frustrating, it's maddening, it's, it just makes you upset. Um, make sure you subscribe to the channel, uh, turn your notifications on, because we are not going anywhere. Just because the Ravens season is done, we are not done by any means. Y'all know that we're going to stay on top of everything, still with the Baltimore Ravens, with our Baltimore Ravens. Uh, and we're still going to have a good time. It would have been a lot better had we been on a little two-week break right now. Uh, oh, we're on the way to the Super Bowl, but... Unfortunately, we not. But anyway, subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on so you don't miss nothing, and leave a like on the video too. We don't like the situation, but leave a like on the video because it does help out a ton. Now, um, getting into this game, um, we'll start off with the defense. The defense, they started off this game really shaky, really shaky, uh, because Patrick Mahomes, uh, they got the ball back after the Ravens offense. They didn't do anything with it on that first drive. Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs offense, they got the ball and they just kept moving, kept converting. And the crazy thing about it, all game long, wasn't really any deep shots. The one at MVS at the very end, that was one deep shot. But a lot of the game was just intermediate stuff. It was, it was mostly just short stuff and them getting yak. Mostly. There was a, a, pass, a couple of passes to Travis Kelsey that were not really deep shots, though. Um, but, yeah, that, so the Ravens took away the deep passing game. It was just a bunch of bunch of little short stuff. And all the way up until that very last play, that 32-yard uh, pass to MVS that ended the game on Arthur Millette, um, Patrick Mahomes had like a little over 200 passing yards. So that's great. To, to hold Patrick Mahomes to like 200 passing yards, that's a win right there. But anyway, the Baltimore Ravens defense has started off, and they, with, with Patrick Mahomes, they had Patrick Mahomes, and he, he scored on the first drive, and then he scored on the second drive. Uh, and then So they had 14 points, but then right before half, the, then the Ravens, they made their adjustments. And, and that's what I was talking about during the stream, too. I said, with Mike McDonald, because people were freaking out, like, oh, Ravens gave up all these touch, these two touchdowns, and Chiefs are doing what they want. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. But Ravens defense, they're close. Because with a lot of the plays, it's not like guys were running wide open. Well, Travis Kelsey was open a couple times. But for the most part, it ain't like a bunch of Chiefs receivers were running wide open. Ravens cornerbacks, safeties, linebackers, they will be right there, but the Chiefs player would make the better play. So I was saying that with Mike McDonald, it's like he's not calling bad plays because the guys are right there, but the Chiefs are just executing better than the Baltimore Ravens are. So then what happened after that? The Chiefs got them two touchdowns, and then I guess Mike made a couple of fixes here and there. They scored three points the rest of the game. The rest of the game, that's what makes this even more frustrating. The Chiefs, they scored 14 points early, and they scored three points for the rest of the game. For the second half, they didn't score a single point, not a field goal, nothing for the entire second half. If I tell you for the entire second half of the game, the Chiefs is going to score 17 points in the first half, but for the entire second half of the game, your team is going to hold the Chiefs out of the, not the end zone, but off of the scoreboard. They ain't getting no more points. They're done scoring. I'm telling you, oh, that's a blowout. Ravens blowing him out the water. Oh, yeah, let's go. Come on, baby. No, not today. Not today. <sighs> not today. Um, Ravens offense in this game, special teams, they did what they had to do. Justin Tucker with that clutch field goal. Uh, to make it a one-score game toward the end of the game. The Ravens offense just failed. Ravens defense will get a stop. Hey, hey, Ravens offense, go ahead. Take it away. Nope. Ravens defense will get another stop. All right, Ravens offense, y'all got us right? Ravens offense, nope. Ravens defense, all right, we just stopped Patrick Mahomes and them again. Let's go. Ah! Ravens offense. Oh, you did? Oh, 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 sorry. They just let him down. All game long for the most part. 
There were some tiny moments here and there. Well, obviously, the big players say flowers uh, for the touchdown. That was a beautiful thing. Lamar evaded pressure, hit Zay down the field with a strike. Touchdown. Let's go. But then later on in the game, he hit Zay Flowers again. And Zay Flowers was a huge part of this game, obviously. Mostly good. But then there was that one play where he had the hiccup. And I don't, I don't put this loss on Zay Flowers. I know a lot of people want to put this loss on Zay Flowers. I don't put it on Zay Flowers at all. Because he showed up in a big way for the Baltimore Ravens all game long. He just, it happened. It, the Chiefs defender made a great play knocking that thing out. It's easy to look back and edit and be like, oh, man, we wish Zay Flowers would have just covered the ball and just put his head down and ran toward the end zone. But he really, he really wanted to get that ball in the end zone for the Ravens. He dove, stuck it out. Chiefs defender knocked it out. It was just a great play by him. Phenomenal play. But that, that was a big, big game changer. Huge game changer for sure. But it's like the plays with the Baltimore Ravens, the turnovers where – First, the first turn, turnover happened in the first half where Ronnie Stanley got beat, and then they just, poop. Lamar's getting ready to throw it. They knocked it out of his hands. That's on Ronnie Stanley. That's not on Lamar. But, see, don't worry. Carter not laughing at Lamar. He ain't laughing at the Ravens. He's laughing at something else. But anyway, um, but then the other turnover where the one on Zay, where he got knocked out, so that was obviously Zay, but the interception. The interception, Lamar Jackson made a terrible decision. But you know what's crazy? He shouldn't have had to pay for that terrible decision. Because it was a terrible decision. He threw into triple coverage, threw it to Isaiah Likely. Bad pass, bad decision. But it was pass interference on that play. It was pass interference. It really was. It was clear pass interference too. What they call? Nothing. And I'm not saying that the refs, that they, they changed the outcome of this game. They had an impact on it for sure. But Ravens still had a lot of opportunities. I, I would not, I'm not one of the people that say, oh, the refs lost them this game. The refs cost them this game. They played a big part. They played a, a significant part. And that, like, plays like that, that's big. Because you think back at it and you're like, man, if they would have called pass interference, Ravens get the ball at the one-yard line. It's like you just know they're scoring. Well, they hand it off to Gus. Lamar keeps it. They throw it to somebody. In it. You just know they're getting a touchdown. But no call that takes away points took away points so that did have a big impact on the game there were a lot of calls in this game that were interesting to say the least there was a taunting call on zay flowers and i said really taunting on zay flowers mm, that they called it was after zay flowers got that big big catch right um at toward the end of the third quarter big catch Oh, Ravens moved down the field. Lamar trying to get them to hurry up. He like, hey, let's keep going, let's keep going, let's keep going. But Zay Flowers, he had threw the ball at the uh he stood over the um the cornerback and kind of threw the ball in his direction. They, oh, taunting. But I know Travis Kelsey was showing out all game. Nothing. 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 Some other calls too that were frustrating, but they were actually legitimate calls. Uh were the roughing the passer on Jadavian Clowney. Oh my goodness, it was frustrating, but Jadavian Clowney. He hit Patrick Mahomes in the helmet. The roughing the passer on <sighs> Travis Jones. It was frustrating, but he hit Patrick Mahomes' face mask up. He hit him in the helmet, and his helmet moved up. It was a good call. It's frustrating, but it was a good call. Kyle Vinoy, unnecessary roughness. He headbutted Travis Kelsey when they get into the little skirmish. It's frustrating. And you hope they will just let him play, but it was a good call. So... Uh, there was some other stuff too There was some holding calls Called on I think number 65 On the Chiefs Those are legitimate Cause he, he, was, he was grabbing them Like he really He tackled them almost um, Am I missing anything? I'm not sure uh, But yeah Frustrating game uh, With the calls But even more frustrating game For the offense Cause again they still Even with all the calls They still had plenty of opportunities They had a lot of opportunities But they did not take advantage Of them at all and they had chance after chance after chance after chance after chance after chance after chance for nothing. They didn't do it. Do you think about Todd Munkin? You think about Gus Edwards? Gus Edwards and Justice Hill. Ravens number one rushing offense in the league. It's playoff time. It's cold weather football. Oh, Chiefs got a bad run defense. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we taking advantage, baby. Nope. Six carries between both of their running backs. Three carries each. Three carries each. Ravens were asking to lose this game by that alone. Ravens panicked 
They panicked, they got scared, they got frightened, and they shut themselves down. They completely turned off the running game. They made the running game a non-factor. They didn't even give themselves an opportunity to get warmed up. Three carries for Justice Hill, three carries for Gus Edwards. Lamar had eight, but that, he's a different part of the running game. He obviously is a, is a big part of it, but he's a different part of it. But with your running backs, three carries each. Zay Flowers, the wide receiver, he had two carries. So he pretty much had just as much carries as your running backs. Your wide receiver did. Embarrassing. A topic of conversation, we'll get into this a little bit later. Uh, a lot of people were worried that when Mark Andrews came back, that the passing game may suffer because they've been doing so well without Mark Andrews and Isaiah Likely been doing his thing. Isaiah Likely was quiet this game. We didn't hear Pete. Well, we heard a little Pete from him early on, but that was, I think he only got one catch. Let me just check to, 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 to double check, but I'm like 99% sure he only got one catch. Oh, he had two catches. Oh, okay. Felt like one. Mark Andrews also had two catches. Felt like one. Uh, Zay Flowers was the leading receiver with five catches for 115 yards and a touchdown. Uh, we remember the fumble, of course, too. Nelson Aguilar had that big catch. He also had a drop at the very beginning of the game, but he had that big catch for 39 yards, which was it looked like it was going to set them up nice. But um, Justice Hill had four catches for 34 yards. Odell Beckham Jr., three catches for 22 yards. It's going to be real interesting to see what they do with Odell Beckham Jr. And this is not a reactionary thing because of the game, but just really this whole season. Because Od Odell Beckham Jr., obviously, he's been hurt all year. So he's been a part-time guy for the Baltimore Ravens. But I wonder how what they're going to do with Odell Beckham Jr. How do they view Odell Beckham Jr.? Are they going to be like, all right, well, Odell Beckham Jr., maybe you'll be healthy next year. We'll keep you around. Or do they look at Odell Beckham Jr. like, all right, well, you a part-time guy. You know what? It just didn't work out. We're going to go for somebody else who's more full-time. Somebody who we feel like we can get more out of. What are you going to do? It's a good question. And we'll see uh, very, very soon in the coming month and a half. Because, yeah, time is a ticking. But, yeah, this team, I was really thinking that this, I just knew this team was going to go all the way. They were going to take care of business, get to the Super Bowl, and win it. They had it. Just knew it. But they failed. And this season, in my opinion, is a failure. It's a failure. You had a great regular season. You went 13 and 4. You had all these, broke all these records and whatnot. Da, 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 da. Awesome. But you didn't get to the Super Bowl and you did not win the Super Bowl. You failed. Came up short. Came up short. So, I had all the chances. You had a roster. The roster was nice. Coaching staff, not, oh man, you, mm. But failed. So, all that goes down the drain. And not that it's all for nothing because, yeah, again, you had a good season overall, but. It just wasn't good enough. And now it's over. Now you can't do anything till next year. You can't avenge yourself till the following football season, till the 2024-25 season. Everything was right there in front of you. And again, for the most part, when someone was right there in front of them, they took it. But this one, they let it go. Team Keep It Clean, I appreciate y'all. We have had a fun season. We wish we could have had a little bit more fun. But it is what it is. Like we said earlier, we ain't going nowhere. We're still dropping videos for y'all. We're still, we still going to be around. Uh, it'll be a little different. The vibe will be a little different because Ravens are done. But we still here. I love y'all so much. Thank y'all for making it such a fun season. Thank y'all for helping the channel out a lot. Thank you for just being a part of the growth. Thank you for being a part of the fun. Thank you for being a part of the positivity. And I know you ain't really feeling too positive right now because of the way that Ravens season ended on such a negative note. And what's even more frustrating about it is like, that's, that's how you lose? Really? Not a last second field goal, not a crazy catch, not some insane play, but that's how you lose like that? That's like, that's a frustrating regular season type loss. You're supposed to leave that uh, in them 17 games. Not no playoffs like that. No, ugh, yuck. No, number one seed, home field advantage, and you, that? <sighs> Come on, man. What's that? That was terrible. Terrible, but you know we're still rocking with the Ravens, man. And just hope the best for next year. And we'll see how the team is assembled. We'll see how the coaching staff is assembled, um, and 
we'll just go from there. But team, keep it clean. I love y'all so much. I appreciate y'all so much. And just like it comes to the Ravens with their status being in the playoffs, we out.